Hey everyone, it's Ivan with KipAstro.com out here for another gear review and today I'm talking muzzle brakes. This one right here by Walker Defense. It is the Nero 556 brake. What is it? It is a muzzle brake and it admittedly looks kind of different, quite a departure in part because, well, twofold. One, when they set out to make this, they were like, hey, how can we make the best muzzle brake with respect to recoil mitigation for a gun and ended up using a bunch of like computer fluid dynamic stuff as far as like how is the best way to vent these gases coming out the end of the barrel so that the gun doesn't move and they came up with this design and honestly i think one of the coolest parts is what allowed them to come up with this design is the manufacturing process Basically 3D printing with Inconel. Really high temperature resistant metal, I guess. They use it in like machine gun suppressors, stuff like that. And they ended up using that in basically the additive process. Some sort of special name for it. Basically it's 3D printing though. Like you're putting a little bit, heating it with a laser, melting it, putting a little more material over and over and over as you slowly print this thing. And with that, you get away from the get away from the constraints of machining. When it comes to machining pieces of metal, billet, whatever it may be, there's absolutely limitations. So those limitations drive design. But when you remove those limitations with things like 3D printing, now you have other design that basically become feasible at that point because you no longer have those limitations. Does it work? Yes. I would almost argue it works too well. And before I get to that, I guess we need to touch on recoil anticipation. I would argue there's basically two different types of recoil anticipation. One of which is conscious recoil anticipation. The other one is unconscious. So if you are going to break a string of rounds really quickly, then you end up anticipating recoil knowing that the gun's going to recoil so that the rounds actually go where they want without having this like huge string of rounds vertically because you're just like bam 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 not anticipating recoil right but then there's the bad part of it which is unconscious recoil anticipation where you're like all right i want to shoot this and that's not so good because then you end up basically dropping rounds down. It happens, I still do it sometimes. But two different types of recoil anticipation. This arguably works so well that with conscious recoil anticipation, like okay, I need to basically help try and mitigate the recoil from this gun as I'm shooting this quick string of rounds, you end up basically driving this gun down. So rather than no recoil anticipation and this thing coming up, when you add some recoil anticipation into it, you're basically driving the muzzle down in conjunction with the braking ability that this Nero 556 is doing, which is kind of crazy. So much so that on their website, it literally says like bold, like, hey, try and just hold this steady without basically without putting any input on it. Because if you have conscious recoil anticipation, your muzzle is actually getting pushed down with a really quick string of fire. Kind of crazy. What are my thoughts? How have I used it? Well, I've used this on a number of outings to the range, putting rounds through it, and I think it's pretty amazing. Two different fronts. On the one hand, the fact they were able to basically map this out with a computer and be like, hey, what's the most efficient way to vent these gases to mitigate recoil? And then two, the technology used to actually print this. Like, that's incredible. I think it's really, really neat just the way they approach that problem. As far as practical application, my use for it, I don't know. On the one hand, yes, it works really well. And if you have a lot of reps on guns it almost works too well because you're like okay cool like i'm used to 
conscious and occasionally unconscious recoil anticipation. And this honestly works kind of against that in conjunction with and drives your muzzle down rather than keeping it flat unless you make a very conscious effort to just be like, okay, I'm just gonna hold this and break shots, which can absolutely be done. It's just kind of remapping like in your mind fast strings of fire, at least for me anyway. The other thing is there's no free lunch. This thing pretty much breathes fire. And the shorter the barrel it goes on, the more of the fire it's gonna breathe. This right here is a 16 inch barrel and it still breathes fire, but it definitely works. Who do I think this would be good for? Someone that wants to go fast. Really, I think competition and just a fun range gun. To the end of competition, if this is on like your competition gun and you're always training with it, so you're like, okay, cool. No recoil anticipation, break those shots, great. If you're someone that kind of shoots a number of different guns with different muzzle devices, this may work against you in that it works so well. So then when you're actually using active, like conscious recoil anticipation, you're driving this muzzle down. I don't know. But outside of kind of those two things, if you're gonna use this where there's consequences, like potential of someone shooting back at you, would not be my first choice massive muzzle flash, let alone if it's into like twilight hours or like God forbid in darkness, huge muzzle flash. And the shorter you go, the bigger it's gonna be. This right here is on a 16 inch barrel, still pretty significant even during the day. So that's a thing. But if you're looking for honestly, probably the best recoil mitigation you can find, this is probably it. You can find them directly through their site. Usually I think about 190 bucks, pretty amazing piece of technology and just kind of the way they came to this design as well. But if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or going over to kitbadger.com, picking up stickers, KBAT target pads, patches, things like that, or picking up shirts through Teespring, all that stuff helps me get out and create videos. Or if you want to support me directly, you can do so through Patreon, little as a dollar a month. And if you have questions for me, happy to answer them. Probably not in the comments, but over on Patreon, we have active Discord. Happy to answer all your questions over there. And as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.